Hello creative souls, join me in the studio this afternoon where I'm going to be sketching some oyster catchers. I managed to get some footage of them at the weekend on the Cornish coast and I'll be sharing with you some reference books that I'm going to be using and also some reference photos and where I got them from. This morning I went to an art group with the intention of uh, practicing sketching my oyster catchers but I didn't get very far so let me share with you how far I got so here he is he's got a body a head and a beak but he hasn't got any legs so this afternoon I plan to be doing an oyster catcher study I wanted to do a wading one and one in flight. Um, I took this photograph along as reference, one that I printed off before I went. It's not my photograph, it's from a photographer on Pixabay. So I will leave the link in the description. And I also took some other ones as well, also from Pixabay, that I like the look of, that hopefully I'll be getting around to sketching. But this is the oyster catch in flight. So I, I'm going to do that one on this side. But I've got some books as well that I'll share with you. Uh, books that I've sort of collected over the years. So this first book is an RSPB book. I think my mum gave this to me one Christmas and I've just noticed it says it includes a birdsong CD but I don't know what I've done with it which is a shame but I've already found the page with the oyster catchers on and although I won't be copying these birds the pictures in here is good just as a reference because it shows the bird stood in flight and you can just check the details like the beak and the eye and some information about them. So that's the first book that I'd really recommend for birds in general. They have all sorts of birds in here. And the pictures are just so lovely. A mixture of artwork and photographs, I think. So that's nice to have on the shelf. And the next book that I'm going to be referring to this afternoon is The Law's Guide to Drawing Birds. And this one is written and illustrated by John Muir Laws. And although he hasn't got oyster catchers in here, he has got a section on working with waders. And he shows you how he starts his sketch, which is normally with a circle for the body and a line across and down and a circle for the head. So it's really interesting how he sketches these out. And again, he covers all sorts of birds in here. So I'm going to be having a little look at this one. And also I noticed at the end, he talks about a few of his favourite pens and pencils. 
he gives a tips on his watercolour palette and he's got one of these water filled brush pens which I've got but I've never actually used so it might be a good one to take out with me next time. Uh, coloured pencils and he also has the watercolour choices that he he uses and his watercolour techniques. So there's lots of really good information in here. And there he is out working in the field. So a really good, interesting book with some really good exercises in there to improve your sketching skills and your watercolour skills. So that's another book I'm going to be referring to. And the last one, I found this in an old sort of bric-a-brac store that had like a mix of antiques and old items. I love to wander around these places and have a good mooch. And this one is by C.F. Tun Tunnicliffe and it's a sketchbook of birds. And the introduction is by Ian Nile. It's a quite an old book, I think. Um, I don't actually know how old it is. Oh, there we go. 1979. And again, it's just got some really lovely sketches in here. And it's broken down into different birds, seabirds, waders birds of prey. So I found his artwork of the oyster catchers and there they are. And that was actually painted on June the 4th, 1942. So again, another good book, you know, keep a lookout for these kind of books in charity shops. Like I said, I found this in sort of an antique bric-a-brac place. And I snapped it up for pence. And then we've got the bird in flight here, the spoonbill, curlews, all sorts. And you can see here how he's drawn out his birds. Beautiful book. And I love the puffins, such cheeky birds. So I'm going to be looking at this one too. Now, when I draw birds, I don't, I'm not as technical as these other artists. I don't think there's a wrong way or a right way, to be honest. But I sort of just sketch what I see. So this one, I actually started with the head and worked my way down so there's no lines or grids or circles that i follow i just sort of sketch with the eye
He's right on the edge of the water, but I've drawn him too da too far down the page to be able to include any of the water. And for me, it's just a little practice, so I'm not going to get too hung up on it. So the second one I'm going to draw this afternoon is in flight. And I've just referred back to the Laws Guide and just seeing how he does birds in flight and how to sort of get the initial basic sketch down and he starts with a line and then he does a V on the top and looking at this photograph I think that could work quite well because we've got the line and then we've got a V so I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I've taken the line through the right part. Maybe the line should go from the tail end through to the beak and then up that way. So I'm going to give it a go and see how it turns out. So those are my finished sketches. I've just gone over both of them with a micron pen. I uh, used a uh, 0.5. No, it's not. It's a 0.5. And I haven't outlined it solidly. I've just gone around uh, sort of a broken edge and put a few bits of detail in. I'm just waiting for the pen to dry and then I'm going to rub out all of the pencil marks and then this afternoon I'm going to get on to my favourite bit of my sketchbook which is painting. I'm going to re-wet these gouache paints and wake them up and see how I get on with some gouache this afternoon. So here's my finished sketchbook study of the oyster catchers using my dried gouache palette in the studio. Hope you enjoyed the video. You can find me on Substack. Thank you for watching.